This video is a companion to the Mellanox webinar entitled SDN Done Right, recorded on November 10, 2016. I'm Mark Iskra. I work as a TME at Nuage Networks. Today I'll present some of the results that we've measured in our lab. The basis for our video is the Nuage VSP, which is used to create an overlay network environment, which we will use for measuring VXLAN throughput performance taking advantage of the capabilities of the Mellanox ConnectX4 network interface cards. Our test environment consists of KVM running on a pair of hypervisors. VMs will be launched running either NetPerf or iPerf as load generators, and then the throughput and the CPU utilization are measured on the opposing hypervisors. Then we can turn on and turn off the offloads to see what the impact is both on throughput and CPU utilization. Now we log in to the Nuage VSP user interface. This is a graphical web interface that allows you to both monitor and design networks. We'll begin by checking the environment to make sure that all the hardware components and functional components of the Nuage VSP are properly functioning and connected to each other. We have a virtual services directory, which is the policy engine. We have the virtualized services controller, which is the SDN controller that's running. You can see it's green and you can see we have the two hypervisors VRS1 and VRS2. Again the lights are green indicating that everything's communicating and working together as it should. Now let's go back and look at the design of the network. Nuage VSP uses several different parameters to define the virtual IP address that will be allocated to VMs. It begins with the enterprise name which is Nuage in this case, and then a domain name, which is D0 in this case, a zone or multiple zones. We have zone one, and then each zone may consist of multiple virtual subnets. In this case, we have subnet one and subnet two. Subnet one has a namespace of 10.10.0.0 slash 24, and subnet two has a namespace of 10.20.0.0 slash 24. As VMs are created, when they're added to a particular subnet, they'll receive an IP address that's a part of that subnet. Nuage VSP also has the ability to allocate policies to VMs and containers as they're spun up in a virtualized compute environment. These policies consist of ingress rules and also egress rules, depending on whether the packet is moving into the virtual network or off the virtual network. In this case, we have all the ports open. Any packet is allowed to move in and out of a virtual machine. However, Nuash VSP does have the ability to create highly specialized rules or very fine-grained controls over what systems and which VMs can access each other. Here we see the same thing for the egress rules. Again, all ports have been opened up in this case. However, we could implement a policy that is using fine-grained access controls to have more control over the way the network functions. Now we're ready to begin launching VMs. As the VMs begin to start, you'll see them appear attached to the subnet associated with their particular instance. Altogether, we'll create a total of 16 VMs. That's eight VM pairs spread across the two different hypervisors. All of the subnet 1 VMs will be on hypervisor 1, and all the subnet 2 VMs will be on hypervisor 2. We do this to separate the transmit and receive functions for performance testing. In a real environment, there's no requirement to keep all the VMs on a particular hypervisor. In fact, most workloads actually distribute pretty evenly the transmit and receive functions. Let's take a look at one of the VMs to see what virtual IP address was associated with it. We begin with the first VM attached to subnet 2, and as you can see, it received IP address 10.20.0.29, which is in the namespace that was associated with subnet 2. Now let's take a look at the offloads that are being used to enable higher throughput using the ConnectX4 offload capabilities. In this window, we can see a list of all the different offload capabilities supported by the Mellanox ConnectX4 NIC. In particular, we're taking advantage of checksum computation offloads, 
segmentation offloads for TCP and also for UDP, namely the GSO and GRO offloads, as well as an offload for the tunnel packets. Combined, these represent the offloads that will turn on and off as we compare performance. Let's begin by looking at performance using a measure of packet rates. On the left and the right on the bottom, you can see packet rates going in and out of each hypervisor. In the upper right, you can see the packet rates going in and out of a VM running on the receive side. And in the upper left, we'll launch a load generator that will create traffic moving between a VM on hypervisor 1 and a VM on hypervisor 2. We'll use iPerf in this case. There will be 10 threads in the VM, and there will be four I.O. queues associated with the VM generating the load. The throughput is approximately 10 gigabits per second. In the upper left-hand corner, this is because the offloads have been turned off. In the lower left, you can see that nearly half a million packets per second are being sent from VRS1 to the other hypervisor, VRS2. Approximately the same number of packets are being received by VRS2 and also up into that one VM which is receiving all the packets being transmitted from the opposing virtual machine. Now let's turn on the offloads and see how that affects throughput. We've jumped from approximately 10 gigabits per second to nearly 30 gigabits per second of throughput in the upper left hand corner. Also you can see that the packet rates on the send side in the lower left are now less. We're only sending about 100,000 packets per second, but we're receiving nearly 2.5 million packets per second on the receive side. And similarly, in the virtual machine that's riding on top of that hypervisor. This is a result of the segmentation capabilities of the VXLAN offload NIC. The VXLAN offload NIC receives a very large request from the virtual machine and then segments that up into many MTU size packets which are transmitted to the opposing hypervisor. There are nearly 20 times as many packets being received as sent as a result of the segmentation being done by the network interface card. The net effect of that is to free up resources on the hypervisor for useful computing while the network interface card takes care of all these basic network operations which can be more effectively done by a customized processor. In this slide, you can see the effect of VXLAN offloads for a large number of VM pairs. In the chart on the right, the red bars correspond to cases where VXLAN offload has been turned off, and the green bars correspond to cases where VXLAN offloads have been enabled. In this case, we're using NetPerf as our load generator, so the results will be slightly different than what we saw previously. The most important result is that we're achieving line speeds even for four VM pairs and even more so for eight VM pairs when the VXLAN offloads are enabled. We hope this was of interest to you. If you have questions, feel free to contact either of us at the email addresses provided below. Thank you for taking time to watch our video.